Great. Okay. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I'm absolutely delighted to be here at the Tank Museum this morning uh, and for the rest of the day to support uh, this on track event for uh, looking after the well being of our uh, armed forces community, but also our emergency services community as well. Uh, my name is Paul Fox and I am the head of the government's money and pension service for the southwest of England and um, I won't bore you with too much technical detail but we are um, a body really that under statute our role is to try and look after the financial well-being of people in this country in particular those people who are financially vulnerable or struggling or are, or are squeezed right now. Um, the last 18 months has been uh, nothing short of uh, a disaster in many ways, but for those households and individuals who were experiencing money difficulties prior to that, um, this pandemic has only exacerbated um, their circumstances. Um, so I'm here today, I'm already working with the MOD and some veterans organisations to try and support um, people across the whole of the region who are having challenges with their money. Um, but what we're going to do this morning, just for 15, 20 minutes, is look at some of the areas that the Money and Pension Service can help you with, uh, can help your colleagues with, can help your friends and families with, uh, and then there'll be a period at the end if anybody's got any questions. Um, I won't be offended if there aren't, because a lot of the time people that bottle that at the end of the presentation, so I don't mind. But I'm being live streamed, so I understand. So you can always pick up on these things afterwards and so on. So I'm going to talk about money for a few minutes, uh, um, perhaps not in the way that you might think about talking about money. I think the first thing to say is that in this country, we're actually, we're not very good at talking about money. We're pretty poor about talking about money. Um, if, you, if you're growing up and your parents, for example, don't talk about money around the dinner table or at the weekends when you're out doing sports and clubs or whatever it is, the chances are that you're going to grow up and not be very confident about talking about money yourselves. And that affects a lot of people. And what that manifests itself in is people are transitioning into adulthood and they simply lack the confidence, the knowledge and the basic competencies, a lot of people, to make positive behavioural decisions about their money. And there's things that we can do about that. There's things that we can, we can change around that. There are five main areas that the Money and Pension Service focus on. Um, and I'm going to use my little clicker here to see if I can get to them, which is here. So we focus firstly on financial education for children and young people and young families. Um, our school system doesn't have a particularly fantastic financial education uh, process embedded with it. Um, a lot of the academisation of schools, they can set their own agendas. Um, there is a brief element, uh, I think, during year 12 when they have a little bit of, of money guidance education, but not a lot. Um, and young families are, uh, you know, getting into the end of their teens, moving into their early 20s, and they've just not had that background in basics like budgeting or credit or you know, the use of risk, what's risky about money and what isn't. So we do a lot of work around that. We also look at savings or financial resilience, a nation of savers we've called it. Something that this pandemic has highlighted is that across the Southwest, the lack of financial resilience in many hundreds of thousands of households is very, very scary. And none of us expected a pandemic 18 months ago, clearly, but too many households still don't have enough money for even a small financial shock. It might be your washing machine blowing up. It might be the car needs 800 pounds of the repairs and you can't commute to your, to your place of work. And so we're doing a lot of work around financial resilience and actually starting to encourage people and look at different ways that people can actually save money and actually build some resilience through, through different behavior. We also look at credit. And credit is a conversation I've already had several times this morning with various people. We're particularly concerned about the use of high cost short term credit by people who need those funds to live week to week. And there are alternatives out there to the likes of payday loans uh, and to the likes of buy now, pay later. And we are concerned that there are not enough people 
who are accessing some of the alternate uh, credit products. Now, credit in itself is, is okay. Actually, we need credit to make the economy go round. You know, we've all used it. We've all over uh, maxed out our credit cards on occasion. Um, but thinking about the different decisions you can make is something that the Money and Pension Service can help you all with. The fourth main element of our work is perhaps the most difficult in some ways, and that's around debt. There are around and about 11 million households in England who we consider over-indebted at the moment. The pandemic is only going to exacerbate that, and we do not think that the demand for debt advice, which we fund, which is free and independent and impartial, we're probably not going to see that spike until maybe the second half of next year. And that's right across the southwest. Primary reason is that people bury their head in the sand when they're in trouble with debt. Um, it's a taboo subject. We feel embarrassed. We feel shamed. And we shouldn't. There are people there who you can talk to, who can support you. Um, I think that across the southwest, far more people should be talking to us about debt advice and professional help. Drop onto Google on your iPad and punch in Debt Advice Yeovil and it will come up with the first dozen links will be institutions who want to either take a fee or push you towards a free solution to get you out of your debt problem. We do not want anybody to pay for debt advice in this country. Money and Pension Service through partners uh, like Citizens Advice provide free, impartial and independent debt advice across this country in England. Um, and I would urge anybody who's watching this either live or watching it on record or is in the room, if you have people who are friends or neighbours or in your household, if you think they're struggling with debt, please encourage them to come and talk to us. Um, we have professionals who can help you um, and work through your problems with you. We do not want people suffering in silence at all. The last major tranche of our work is pensions. I was having a conversation with a major this morning and we were talking about pensions. Now, military pensions are notoriously complicated and I'm not even going to attempt to say that I understand them in any way, shape or form. But generally speaking, again in this country, we're not very good at engaging with our pensions early enough in life. I remember I turned 50 last year and if I go back halfway through my life, mid-20s, I didn't give a monkeys about pensions. It was completely irrelevant. Why would I want to spend money on something that is never going to happen? I'm never going to be old. You know, my, my meagre wages are on going out at the weekends and buying a new pair of trainers. And that was all I was bothered about. But as you start to get older, your responsibilities in life change. You maybe get married, you settle down, you start a family, your career, um, whether you've been in the military or not, you may exit the military and transition into Civvy Street and do something else. But we tend to start to think about our retirement only within two or three years of when we're actually due to retire. And by that point, it may actually be a bit too late to make any structural differences to your finances in retirement. You might have left it too late. So a lot of our work is about connecting people with their pensions earlier in life, but actually starting to encourage behavioural change as to how people can go about thinking about it. You know, it may well be that you can't make that extra stretch, and I completely understand that, but there are ways to think about um, longer-term monetary issues within your household that are actually very positive, and we can, we can help with that. Um, any of you in the room who've got pensions, I probably imagine most of you have got some pension connections. If you are 50 years older or older in this country and you have a defined contribution pension from a previous employment or a current employment, and uh, you can, uh, you're eligible for a free appointment with government's Pension Wise program. I actually did it myself um, in the summer. Um, I'm not a pensions professional at all but it's an hour's consultation with a seriously good pensions professional. They will take you through all the different options, and this is for all you out there in the ether who are watching this live or on record as well. They will help you look at the choices that you've got. What they won't do is say, oh, put it into Pension Pot Smith Limited or Jones Limited. We're impartial, we're independent, 
Um, we have no commercial links at all, but they will explain to you what your options are. You might be able to say, well, I'm kind of hoping to retire at 65. Great. You're 52 now. What are the next 13 years going to look like for you? And what decisions and questions around your pension are you going to have to think about? Equally, if you're not on a defined contribution, um, you might be public sector, so you might be in the military, you might be in the emergency services, work for a local authority, it doesn't matter. Um, a lot of you will have different pension structures. Equally, come along and talk to us at Money Helper, which is our consumer-facing brand, and there'll be lots of these available outside um, if you want to grab one afterwards. We can help you understand your pensions. Um, I had a gentleman this morning who was with his partner. Both of them had served in the armed forces and he retired from the forces 15 years ago. It shocked me. He had no idea whatsoever what had happened to his military pension. He said, I've had no paperwork in 15 years. What do I do? I'm going to be 55 in five years' time, he said. I was able to put him in touch and give him the details of one of our pension guidance specialists. He's going to go and have that conversation. We will help him track him track his pension down and understand what his, his options are with that. He's gone away happy. That's made my day. So, you know, if he's able to do that, um, let's do that for a, for a lot more people. There are lots of different things we could look at in terms of everyday money, but I'm not here to teach you to suck eggs really this morning. What I do want to, to say is that there are opportunities for all of us in life to make the most of the money and pensions that we've got. And that's what we are here for at the Money and Pension Service. Money Helper is our consumer-facing brand. It went live in June of this year. And I'm going to go right to the end so you can see what Money Helper logo looks like. There you go, on the bottom right. Money Helper. Now, Money Helper has a wide array of free-to-use uh, resources, tools, and content for literally any financial circumstance in your life. A lot of financial concerns um, actually develop when there's been some form of economic shock in your life. It may be you've lost your job or changed your job. Um, it may be that you've become ill and you're unable to work. It might well be that sadly there's a bereavement in the family or perhaps a, a split with a partner. Any of these things typically cause an economic shock in the household. People panic, they don't know where to turn, they don't know what questions to ask. There is so much information out, particularly online, um, commercial organisations wanting to try and make money out of you in some way. Come and see us at Money Helper and we can talk to you independently and impartially about some of those choices that you've got. Equally, your kids, let's have a back, think about kids for a moment. Those of you with families, I was fortunate, I feel. My dad um, ran a company when I was young, and so he talked about money in his day job all the time, and he actually talked me a little bit about money at night. You know, I knew what a bank account was, 12 years old, 13 years old. Um, I had the NatWest pigs for any of us of a, of a particular age, <coughs> which certainly you youngsters at the front won't have a clue what I'm talking about. But, you know, I had, I had a piggy bank. And I understood a little bit about budgeting and a bit about saving, and I could actually undo my sister's piggy bank with a paper clip, which was a nice trick as well back at the time. I still haven't fessed up to that 35 years later, by the way. Um, but talking to your kids, for example, about money, um, or your friends and, and their kids, is absolutely vital. We've got some great resources for parents, carers, grandparents, um, to talk to youngsters about money and to start to allow them to explore what it means to, to buy something, um, what it means to put something aside and, and save for something. Um, they don't necessarily have to worry about the pensions at age eight, that's not, not what I'm saying, but having the confidence and getting young people who, the more young people we can get to grow up and have a better financial education are going to have a more positive financial future. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to earn a lot of money. We'd all probably love to earn more money. You know, it's something that's embedded in us. But at the Money and Pension Service, our sole role is to help you. It's to help everybody across the military community, the veterans community. For me in the Southwest, I'm working with charities who are supporting veterans who are in, in crisis. 
and part of that crisis is because they've got financial worries and concerns. There are quantified links to mental health challenges if you're having financial challenges. We know that about one in five people who presents to a GP in the southwest with mental health concerns, underpinning that is financial concerns. So we're actually getting involved with the NHS now in what's called social prescribing. So the GP is able to talk to that particular patient and he's able to signpost to the money and pension service. It doesn't mean that the mental health concerns won't be treated, but if the underlying problem is they owe £30,000, let's get that underlying problem dealt with. And we're, we're here to help. We're at a military event and an emergency services event today, and, and it's a real privilege for, for me to be here. I, I live in Dorchester, so it was a, a really good commute for me in this morning. This was great, but not the only reason I'm here, I hasten to add. Um, and I'm doing some work with the MOD at the moment across the southwest, and we're giving money guidance training to some of the young soldiers. So unit by unit, um, they're being instructed, you will be on Zoom at 9 o'clock on on a Friday morning, and by God, all 200 of them are. It's great, the three-line whip. I wish I had that in other walks of life. But we're talking to these young men and women about budgeting, about loan sharks, about what to look out for in terms of credit, about your partner at home who may be raising a young family. Maybe you're abroad and you haven't seen them for six, nine, or 12 months because you're serving. What sort of financial conversation should you be having under those circumstances? And it's really important. So the more that we can reach younger people and younger families and have these conversations, the better equipped they're going to be as they get older through life. And that's absolutely crucial. And that's what financial well-being is about, really. Um, it's a phrase that only came about maybe four or five years ago. Back in the 1970s, Everybody started talking about health and safety. Ew, put a hard hat on if you're working with steel, for example. Nobody really bothered too much before that. 10, 15 years ago, we started talking about mental health a lot more, particularly in the workplace, um, but more generally wider in society. And nobody really thought about financial well-being until perhaps about five or so years ago. And it's now become actually a triumvirate. You know, physical health, mental health and financial health are three crucial factors that we can all work on at any point in our lives. And that financial well-being, third of that wider sort of well-being agenda, is something that you can all develop. You're never too old. It doesn't matter whether you're single, married. It doesn't matter whether you, you know, you, you've got a huge family. It doesn't matter whether you're isolated. We want to help those people particularly who are struggling and who are vulnerable. One of the things that we know in the Southwest about debt is that we know there's a tsunami of debt on the way. And the way people deal with debt quite frequently is that they'll max out their credit card first, then they'll max their overdraft out, then they'll maybe tap up the bank of mum and dad, and maybe then, and only then, will about a third of them think, do you know what, I actually need some professional guidance, I need some help. Um, any of you in this room today, anybody listening out there on, on this live stream, if you know somebody who's struggling with debt, get them to call us, call Money Helper, We've got people there that can help you. Now, I'm conscious of about 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to fling open the room for any questions. I don't expect a deluge because nobody tends to ask questions under these circumstances. But um, if you have got any questions, please feel free to fire away. There's another few topics I'm, I'm going to cover if not. But if anybody wants to, to ask me anything, then go right ahead. Good morning, man. Oh, I am sorry. I'm supposed to say, please, could you wait for the microphone? Uh, my error. Technician at the back. Apologies for that. I was only told four times before this started. I started my... It's not working. It's not going out loud. It's going into the ether. I started my first pension 30 years ago when yeah. my daughter was born. Um, and over the intervening period of time, I got probably half a dozen pensions yeah. because every time I started a new job I'd start a new pension with that yeah. company 
I have no idea what's happened to mo the vast majority of those pensions over the last 30 years. So how do I go about finding them? Do you have paperwork for any and all of them? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Um, the government... The latter ones, yeah, yes. But maybe not some of the ones from... Not the early ones, not okay. the one from 1992, no. Okay. And the thing is, I've moved house several times in that period, yeah. changed my name due to yeah. um, marriage and divorce yeah. um, and things like that. And because of that, things have... Yeah. just vanished it's it's not an uncommon situation i'll i'll provide you an answer for that in a second but it's not uncommon at all um if you go back 30 40 years broadly speaking people tended to go into an employment at a young age and you're probably going to be in it for 40 45 50 years so you had that one pension pot or that one pension scheme that just isn't the way the world work works anymore um, I have several pots from, from different employments over the years and it is easy to lose track. And I mentioned paperwork. I get my annual pension statement through from one provider. It runs to 28 pages. 28 pages, they can do it in one. You know, it's full of jargon, it's far too technical and most of us tend to file it in the circular file to the right hand side of our desk. To answer your question, there is help available for that. The government has a pension tracing service, okay? And um, they will be able to help you locate and track down all those individual pensions from your 30 years or so of career. So when we've finished in here, which is in about sort of five or six minutes time, if you want to come over to the, the money and pensions desk that I'm, I'm staffing today, I'll get those details for you. Uh, and you can contact them. Um, I think, I haven't used it myself, but I think, you know, if you've got details of where you worked, during what, roughly what time period you work, there'll be other details they want. Um, but yeah, the government can help you trace those pensions. We are currently working on a pensions dashboard at the Money and Pension Service, which we're hoping is going to go live at some point uh, in the nearest future. And the pensions dashboard is going to be an opportunity for everybody in the country to see where all their different pensions are in, at one time. Um, it's perhaps long overdue. It's a phenomenally big piece of work for obvious reasons. There are about 40 or so thousand different pension providers in this country. So it's a massive logistical challenge. But keeping track of those pensions is, is absolutely crucial. So we can help you out with that. We'll do so afterwards. Did anybody else want to, to ask anything? Or I'm, I'm going to touch on a specific topic if not. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk for a, a little bit, just till the end, for another sort of four or five minutes, um, about a topic that has come up several times when I've been providing money guidance sessions to uh, the military community. And I've done about eight sessions this year with various units. And it's been coordinated by a major out of Tidworth, and she is the SO2 life skills lead. So her role is to equip these young men and women with various different life skills that will be of value to them, not just when they transition out of the military, but, but throughout their whole life. And one of those is around money. And one of the topics that's come up is around scams and loan sharking. And actually the military community are quite vulnerable to loan sharks uh, and to scams. Um, there are a wide variety of reasons for that, but <coughs> a lot of the time it's because, um, particularly with serving personnel, a lot of them don't actually have too much day-to-day -day contact with their own personal finances. It may be that you've got a spouse or a partner at home who perhaps handles the money, so you don't actually deal with it or interact with it uh, a lot yourself. And that's okay. I'm not saying that's, that's a bad thing. But it can sometimes make you vulnerable to people who want to fleece your hard-earned money. Um, I know of stories of loan sharks. I work with the England Illegal Money Lending Team to stop loan sharks. And young serving personnel have been targeted in places that they socialise. The gym and the pub. It's not uncommon for loan sharks to hang around in the local boozer and 
catch somebody when they're running out of money or a bit short at the end of the night and they've had two or three pints. So well worth five minutes of your day, all of you and anybody listening, is get onto the Money Helper website and have a look at the information we've got around scams and around loan sharking. If I can send you away with, with anything today, it's very probably to look at that. There are people being fleeced to their pensions in this country right now. Um, the average amount of money that people are losing in a pension scam is scary. It is in excess of £100,000. You've worked your whole lives for that. It's yours. You deserve it. And I don't want to see anybody take any of their hard-earned accruement for retirement off any of you. And off any of you listening. So please, go and have a look at the information on Money Helper about scams, uh, pension scams, but other sort of scams as well. You know, we've all seen them in there. I think three times in the last fortnight, Amazon have emailed me to tell me that my account's been suspended. I don't think Amazon would be pleased if their comms lead, who was sending that out, realised what an appalling speller they were, because every third word was incorrectly spelt. Clearly it's a scam. The golden rule, you don't know who it is, delete it. Your bank, your building society, your credit card company will never contact you and ask for secure details over the phone. They will not do that. So if somebody is asking you for one-time passcodes or passwords, they're trying to scam you. So have a look at that on Money Helper um, and spread the word. Do me a favour if you would please and spread that word around um, because the more we can make it difficult for these, and I won't swear this morning because I'm on camera, for these individuals to prey on those people who are financially vulnerable, then the better it is for individuals, the better it is for communities, and the better it is for all of us across the Southwest. And I'm conscious I've got about 60 seconds or so. I just want to wrap up, first of all, by saying, Thank you for spending half an hour of your morning when there's an incredibly fantastic tank exhibition going on out there to listen to me bang on about cash for 25, 30 minutes. But it's important. What we don't want to say is that there's nothing else out there in life apart from thinking about money. There truly is, and we need to embrace that. But your well-being is incredibly important throughout all stages of your life. I think if anything, this last 20 months or so of pandemic and lockdown one and two and three has taught all of us is that there's a lot more that we can do to look after our own well-being, um, physical, mental and financial. And there are organisations across the southwest who I'm currently working with or have worked with over the last year and a half, two years, who are doing some fantastic support work to support not only the wider military community and the wider emergency services community, um, but others across the Southwest who are struggling in some way, shape or form. I've worked with a fantastic charity in Cornwall who's working with about 80 veterans and their families who are struggling with mental health. And you might think, well, 80 people, it's not a lot. But we were able to support them at the money and pension service with a financial well-being element. They were getting first-class mental health support from this particular charity. And I spoke to the director only about six weeks ago. Uh, and over 18 months, they've helped in excess of 50% of those families to um, really improve their financial situations and their mental health. There is support out there for all of you your families, your friends, your kids, your parents. It doesn't matter what your status or where you live. The Money and Pension Service simply exists to help you. It exists to help you make your lives better by thinking about money in a different way and by providing you with tools and resources and support that will help you at any stage of your life and any, any challenge or difficulty you might be in. So. Money Helper, it's www.moneyhelper.org.uk. 
Um, it's all very bright and zoomy and flash done by my digital colleagues, but it really has got some very, very useful information on there. So please share it. I do have to stand a small table over there. If you want to take any information away from there, you're more than welcome. <laughs> Spread it out to your family and friends. And I hope out there in, in internet land, uh, there's a few of you picking up on this as well. Please do visit moneyhelper.org. We're here to help you. And finally, I'd just like to say thank you very much again for all of you for coming to listen this morning and uh, enjoy the rest of your day uh, looking at the tanks. I'm hoping to get 10 minutes at lunchtime. So thanks very much.